Friday in the midst of COVID-19 quarantine. And for a lot of us, it does not feel like a good Friday. It does not feel like a happy Friday or a good Friday, because if a lot of us are suffering, a lot of us are feeling the pinch of what's going on right now. We're watching the news. There's nothing but bad news, people dying, people going bankrupt, the foreboding future, all the uncertainty. We're in quarantine. We're missing family. We're missing friends. We're missing just being out and doing what our normally routine, normal routine would avail us to do. We're missing that freedom and that connection with the people we care about and the fun of just being able to go to a restaurant or take the spouse out for a date night and stuff like that. So we're out of our normal, normal routines. Uh, we're feeling out of shape because we're not going to the gym. We're feeling lethargic because we're not moving as much as we used to. And uh, our routines are totally dismantled. We're working from home. We've got the chaos and cacophony of kids in the background. If you have kids, young kids like myself, I got a four-year-old, six-year-old, 10-year-old, and a 12-year-old. And you got to be knowing when you got that kind of energy in the house, it's going to be chaos. And some of you can relate to that. And you may not be used to that because you're used to working at the office. So there's a lot of new shifts, a lot of turbulence, a lot of change, and a lot of change that's frankly, unwanted, undesirable. And meanwhile, we're noticing our pipelines perhaps drying up because deals are falling through because people are uncertain about their income. Maybe they're losing their jobs. Uh, they're feeling uncertain about the future with their jobs. So they're pulling out at the 11th hour. And so a lot of you are feeling the pain of COVID-19 right now. You're suffering through a lot of uncertainty, a lot of contraction in your income, a lot of turbulence, and then you're seeing it on the news and you're talking about it with friends and family and colleagues. And so for a lot of you, you're in this dark place that does not feel like a happy Friday or a good Friday. And you may be listening to this on another day other than Friday, but it happens to be good Friday today. So I'm speaking to that. And so I just want to let you know, I feel your pain right now. And it is definitely a difficult season for many, many, many people. Millions of people have got on the dole. And uh, if you're in Canada, millions of people are on EI or have requested to get on EI. Uh, many a business are on the verge of bankruptcy. So, I mean, we have good reason to have a sense of uncertainty about the future right now. And what I want to talk to you today is how to in the midst of this storm, anchor yourself to a place of peace, power, poise, resourcefulness, and get in a space internally, emotionally, spiritually, where you can rise up and be like the phoenix rising from the ashes in the midst of the challenges, in the midst of the adversity, and to expand while everyone else is contracting to take market share while everyone else is hunkering down, stacking toilet paper and Campbell's soup and hoping for the best. And while your competition right now is in freak out mode, like most people are, you can be turning this into a glorious opportunity like you've never seen before. You may never see another opportunity like this in your career in the mortgage business where your competition's dropping like flies, where they're stepping out of your way, unequipped and ill-equipped to deal with this adversity. And yet, and yet in the midst of that, you have eyes to see a different perspective, to see the opportunity in the midst of the adversity and to harness it to your advantage. That's what we're going to be talking about today. How to expand while everyone else is contracting so you can be that beacon of light, that pillar of strength, that solution provider, that leader who rises up and leads people into turning this adversity into opportunity and coming from a place of peace, power, poise, faith, as opposed to fear, gratitude, as opposed to griping and allowing your light to shine like a bright star in the midnight sky. That's what we're going to be talking about today. How can you be that? How can you step into that superhero identity and let your purpose unleash in the face of this adversity? What if, here's a question I was talking with with one of my coaches on faculty the other day. 
What if we could write a audacious, countercultural, counterintuitive story in the midst of COVID-19? What if we were to write a completely countercultural and counterintuitive story that six to 12, 24 months from now, we can look back and say to ourselves, COVID-19 is the absolute best thing that ever happened to me and my family, in my business. What if we could write a story where we prove ourselves right in that, where we become the self-fulfilling prophecies in that, where we write a story by design, not by default, with purposeful intention, where we say, I'm going to prove myself right with whatever I believe, just like the late and great Henry Ford once said, whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right. If indeed that is the case, what if we were to write an audacious, bold, crazy story that's not anchored in delusional optimism, but anchored in the truth that we are all prophesiers of our own future by virtue of what we expect. If we expect the worst, chances are we're going to get the worst. If we expect to contract and to go backwards and to let this be a massive blow to our proverbial gonads or ovaries such that it destroys our momentum, it destroys our strength, it destroys all that we've built, then chances are we're going to prove ourselves right because that which we believe we tend to attract. And as Henry Ford said, whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right. You know what that's speaking to? We are all self-fulfilling prophecies. And so I know it's hard right now. I know it's a very difficult season for many. I know that, you know, this adversity is real for many. And that means that this is a real opportunity, that there's a seed for equal, equivalent greatness of opportunity in the midst of the greatness of adversity. As Napoleon Hill said, in every adversity, there's a seed of equal, equivalent opportunity. and. My goal for you today is that I spark a fire in you, a flame in you that decides us to rise up and be that beacon of light and that pillar of strength and to expand while everyone else is contracting because in times of great fear, great uncertainty, leaders are needed more than ever before. So I know it's tough and I know right now we have many reasons to stick our tail between our legs feel sorry for ourselves, buckle like cheap lawn furniture, stayed glued to the news and just gripe, moan, complain and commiserate and feel, feel sorry for ourselves eating from the bread of victimhood. But that's not you. That's not me. Let your competition be that and do that, but not us. We're here to be leaders. We're here to be beacons of light. We're here to be warriors and warrioresses of light who lead people into opportunity in the midst of adversity and show people how to get stronger, better, sharper, wiser, and to rise up in the midst of the storm, to use that storm to propel us to our dreams, to our greatness, to our calling, to our purpose, instead of against the rocks. Because at the end of the day, what we're facing right now is resistance. You know what resistance is in the gym? An opportunity to build muscle. If you don't have a resistance, you do not have an opportunity to build muscle. The lighter the resistance, the less the opportunity to build muscle. The heavier the resistance, the more you're going to lift weight other people aren't able to lift, the more you're going to build muscle like no one else. And those are the leaders of tomorrow. Those are the ones who inherit the market, not the ones who shrink back, buckle like cheap lawn furniture, feel sorry for themselves, and play the victim role. Those people are going to get chewed up and spat out. They're going to be the roadkill of COVID-19. Let that be your competition, but not you. You're destined for greatness. You're called to be overcomers. You're called to be leaders. Let other people shrink back in fear, but not you. You step up in faith, in power, in peace, in poise. You have eyes for opportunity in the midst of the adversity. You guys with me on that? So that's a little bit of the precursor, precursor if you will, the preface for what we're going to be talking about today. And I want to talk to you just about a few things that I think really matter inside of this conversation of expansion while everyone else is in contraction. How do we do that? How do we live that? How do we be merchants of certainty 
in uncertain times? Well, I'm glad you asked. The first thing that uh, I would really inspire you, if I can use that word, to consider adopting is this simple piece, this simple key distinction that I think is mission critical. It is empathy. You see, your one of the things that I've struggled with a lot in my life is empathy because I've got this personality that just wants to forge forward. And so it doesn't matter how dark or how dismal the storm might be. I always seem to find a way to put a smile on my face, pep in my step and trudge on. And I suppress my fears. I suppress my doubts. I suppress my feelings. And I just trudge on like a soldier. And while that works better than playing the victim, I think it's played a real role in disconnect in my marriage. And it's been a weakness in my leadership because I haven't been able to really open up to my humanity to let people in, to have people see the real me. I've been afraid to open my heart and my vulnerability because I was afraid people would think I look weak. I was afraid that if I share the fact that I have real feelings of fear and doubt and uncertainty and inadequacy that people wouldn't like me, they wouldn't accept me. And that it would just pour gasoline on the fire of this niggling feeling that I'm not enough. So I would pretend that everything's fine. I would pretend that I'm strong when really inside I feel weak. So there's an incredible power of empathy that I was missing out on. I was missing out on true, authentic connection with friends, with my wife, uh, with my clients, because I was in pretend mode all the time, pretending to be this powerful leader who never feels fear when really in my honest, genuine humanity, yeah, I'm feeling that doubt and that fear and that, and that uncertainty. And I'm feeling the pain and the strain of being on the front lines of real life and getting my ass kicked. You know, like when people don't see their humanity and your humanity and vice versa, it's hard to connect. Have you noticed? So I realized recently in my marriage with my wife, I've been married 17 years, that that lack of empathy and that proclivity towards pretending everything's cool when it's not and not accepting my own humanity and not accepting my own weaknesses and trials and feelings and just suppressing them and pushing them down was making it really hard to be that safe place for my wife when she's struggling and she's having a hard time, I wouldn't be able to give her that empathy and compassion and caring she needed. I wanted to be that caring place, but I didn't know how. I wanted to be that safe place, but I didn't know how. So when she was suffering, she would push me away because I wasn't able to show up in caring and empathy for her. And that obviously created even more divisiveness and even more fear and even more disconnect. And we went through that cycle of her suffering and pushing me away and me not being a safe place because I couldn't connect with her pain and I couldn't be compassionate and empathetic in her pain that I, uh, yeah, we've, we've had many, a, uh, shall we call heated debate and a lot of squabbles in our marriage over the last 17 years, just because I wasn't able to allow myself to be vulnerable with her and be that safe place for her to mourn, to cry, to suffer, and for me to just be there for her and to get connected to the pain she's going through. Now, how does this relate to COVID-19? Well, a lot of people are suffering right now. And I think the worst thing we can do is just pretend that the suffering's not happening, that, you know, everything's just lollipops, unicorns, rainbows, and sunny skies, when in reality, it's stormy as hell. Our houses are getting thrashed by branches and there's a drop in temperature in our house because the power's out and now we're all getting cold and it's gloomy and it's uncomfortable and the storm ain't over yet. There's a whole bo a bunch of foreboding uncertainty around when is it going to end? 
And I think the worst thing we can do as leaders, as influencers, is pretend the storm isn't there and to just put our happy-go-lucky smiles on. And I had to learn that the hard way in my own marriage. So I want to just retell that and share part of my world with you to spark something in you where you can bring caring, genuine caring, compassion, concern for your clients, for your partners, for your family in this time, that they can be a safe place for you, that you can be a safe place for them, and that they can relate to not you whining, sniveling, complaining, moaning, griping, and feels, feeling sorry for yourself and just having a commer- commiseration session, operation commiseration. That's what, not what I'm talking about, but I'm talking about real compassion and empathy where you just feel their pain and it's okay to feel it. That's the bridge for influence. That's the bridge for a bond of trust where you can lead them out of that darkness into the light. Without that connection, there's not a safe place for you to genuinely influence them into power, out of powerlessness and into power. There just isn't. So take it from me, from someone who has been very anemic with that muscle and has been struggling for many a year to be empathetic and compassionate. Take it from me. It's something you don't want to overlook and it's something you really want to be cognizant of and intentional about. Um, The other thing too is the power of gratitude. You want to expand while everyone else is contracting. It starts with expanding your gratitude. Just getting heart connected to all that you are graced with now. You have good health. Or if you don't have good health, you have better health than most. Or if you don't have better health than most, you can still speak. You can still you know, touch someone. You can still love and be loved. You can... You have people in your life that are blessings to you, that you're grateful for. You have eyes to see and ears to hear. You have many a faculty and gifts in your life that if you're anything like me, you you take for granted. An attitude of gratitude is not necessarily having what you want, but wanting what you have. And even the challenge, you know, that's, I think, the ultimate measure of maturity is when you can start to be grateful for the storms of life, be grateful for the challenges of life, because that's where you grow. That's where you build muscle. You think about the sharp edged sandy rock inside of an oyster that festers in the flesh, the soft flesh of the oyster. It's not comfortable. It's unwanted. It's undesirable. But Without that annoyance and that aggravation, you'd never see the glory of the pearl, the brilliance and the glory and the beauty of the pearl. So it's in the darkness. It's in the friction of the challenge where we grow and we see something extraordinarily beautiful come out of it. If we intend to turn that adversity into opportunity. If we intend by design, by intention, purposeful intention, to turn that stumbling block into a stepping stone, to turn that so-called setback into a set up, to turn that wind that seems to be galing against you and pushing you against the rocks. We tilt the sail, we shift the rudder, to allow that wind to propel us to our dreams, our goals, and our greatness. The calling, the fullness of the calling that God has called us to. Without that resistance, without that pain, there is no gain. Without the risk, there is no reward. And so what am I saying? I'm saying, let's cultivate an attitude of gratitude. If you want to expand while everyone else is contracting, you can't afford to eat from the bread of commiseration whining, sniveling, complaining, feeling sorry for yourself and playing the victim role. Let other people do that, but not you. You see the green, you see the growth, you see the greatness, you see the opportunity, you see the progress, you see the opportunity, you see the pathway to expansion, you see hurting people who need your leadership, who need your light. You see people in the darkness who need your light, your love, your gratitude, your certainty, your peace, your power, your poise, to lead them into a better place. 
If not you, who? If not now, when? This is the time, my friends, for such a time as this. So the power of gratitude allows you to expand while everyone else is contracting. And that leads to the next key pillar to expansion in the midst of contracting times, and that is leadership. To own your identity as a leader, to own your identity that the pain you've gone through, the hell you've gone through, the fact that you've crawled out of hell makes you the strong one. Most people live there their entire lives in uncertainty, inadequacy, shame, guilt, feeling sore for themselves, lack, limitation, and scarcity. The fact that you've gone through hell and you climbed out makes you one of the strong ones. So now you have the muscle, you have the emotional, spiritual fortitude to be that beacon of light, that pillar of strength, to take these people who are in the darkness right now by the hand and lead them out of the darkness into the radiant light of new opportunity, of new strength, of new muscle, to expand while everyone else is contracting. But that's never going to happen if you see yourself as inadequate, not enough, that you're still needing to get just perfect. You hide behind your inadequacies. I used to do that. Heck, I was a late bloomer at this Facebook Live thing because I was afraid of tripping on my lips and saying the wrong things and looking like a fool and what are people going to think and people going to find out that, I'm a fraud and that I'm a you know, loser and I'm not good enough and they're going to prove my fears right. All this bullshit, all the stinking thinking and mind trash that I was towing around and claiming as truth when it was just complete BS. Some of you need to let go of all that trash, all that junk in your trunk because you're pulling it along day after day, dragging all these erroneous beliefs along in this big rucksack on your back that's weighing you down, that's exhausting, it's sapping you. It's zapping you of your energy, of your power, of your peace, of your joy, of your posterity, of your purpose. It's time to just let that stuff go. You're hiding behind these lies as if they're true. They're not true. You are enough. God don't make no junk. You have what it takes. You're designed for greatness. You were knit in your mother's womb for a special plan and a special purpose. Embrace it. Stop hide, hiding behind the excuses and step into your power. Why not you? Why not you be the beacon of light? Why not you be the one who crawled out of the darkness, crawled out of hell, so now you have the muscle to lead other people out of that darkness into the radiant light of a calling, a purpose, that's glorious and good. Because at the end of the day, that darkness was there for a reason, to strengthen you. You wouldn't have gotten that strength without it. But to hide behind it in shame and guilt, now that's an anchor around your neck that's holding you back from your purpose. Time to let that shit go, friends. It's time to step into the glory of the good purpose that you're called to. But you can't step into it if you're dragging all that trash with you. It's time to let it go. I, I was dragging my trash for far too long, thinking I'm not good looking enough. I'm not charismatic enough. I'm not funny enough. My ears are too big. My head's too long. My nose is too long. I can't speak right. People they won't take me seriously. I'm too young. Blah, blah, blah. A bunch of bullshit. And what was it doing? It was causing me to play safe and play small and feel sorry for myself and live in a very small little box called my comfort zone. Screw the freaking comfort zone. That comfort zone is for people who want to live a very small life, not you, not me. If you want to live a big life, a beautiful life, an expansive life, guess what? It's called getting comfortable being uncomfortable every freaking day. That's the new rhythm and fiber and fabric of your life. It's called the champion's life, the winner's life, the expansive life. You want to be a champion and lead people into that champion life and be a catalyst for contribution, a catalyst for expansion in your family, in your community, in your team. You can't afford to eat from the bread of being comfortable. Screw freaking comfort. That's for people who are content living the chump life and lack limitation and scarcity. That ain't you. They have the call for greatness. They have the call to be the eagle, but they 
Let fear keep them in the box, scratching it around in the chicken yard with the chickens. Let that be your competition, but not you. The time is now, friends. Let's mount up on wings like eagles and let's step into our identity as leaders. Your clients need you to be leaders of certainty, leaders of empathy, leaders of compassion, leaders of caring, and leaders of hope right now. Your partners need you to be beacons of hope right now, merchants of certainty right now. They need you to show them how to turn this adversity into opportunity. If not you, who? I guarantee your competition's not doing it. They're stacking up toilet paper, Campbell's soup, hoping for the best. They got their tail between their legs and they're in the fetal position, feeling sore for themselves and just hunkering down, hoping for the storm to roll over. Let your competition do that. You step up and be that beacon of light for those partners. Show them the pathway to po- prosperity in unprosperous times, to be least and last affected by market downturns. Show them the pathway to resurrect dead leads into hot for what you got leads. Show them the pathway to turn their open house leads into more hot for what you got leads. Show them the pathway to turn their database into more repeat and referral business. Show them the pathway to expand in a market where their competition is hunkering down and stepping out of their way and dropping like flies. If not you, who? If not now, when? This is your time, friends. This is your time. But if you're not willing to own that identity as a leader, you're going to miss it. And you're going to end up being roadkill. There's no in between. You're either growing or dying, friends. I suggest we grow and go. And the last piece that I wanted to share is the power of perspective. The power of perspective. It's all about the meaning you're placing to it. See, the truth is that life is just an ever-flowing ebb and flow of challenges and crisis. We're either coming into a crisis We're in a crisis or we're coming out of a crisis. That's the fiber and fabric and rhythm of life. If you hadn't noticed by now, check out history and you'll see, doesn't take long to notice that that is the rhythm of life. We're coming out of challenges. We're coming into challenges. We're in the midst of challenges. What if life wasn't about avoiding challenges, but growing from them, not going through them, but growing from them? such that they're happening for you, not just happening to you? What if they're there to help you step into the calling and the greatness that God has for your life, not for your comfort zone? What if God's purpose for your life was not for you to be comfortable, but to be challenged into becoming all that you're called to be, to build your character, to build your fortitude, to build your strength, to build your identity as a leader, so that you can be that person anchored to faith, anchored to gratitude, anchored to power in the midst of any storm, such that you eat problems for freaking breakfast all day, every day. Is that not who you want to be? Is that not the kind of emotional, spiritual inner strength you want to step into? Well, if that's the case, let's use this as an opportunity right now, friends. It's all a matter of perspective. What if COVID-19 was the greatest blessing that ever happened to you and your family and your business? What if that was the story you start to weave and unravel in your life as the truth that you prove right? What if, if that is the prophecy in your life that you declare upon your life that you prove right because you are indeed a self-fulfilling prophecy? It's all a matter of perspective. This can be the worst season in your life or the best season of your life. It all depends on your perspective. You're right either way. You decide. So that's my rant for today, friends. I don't know if you got anything from it. I felt like I got something from it just by sharing this. If anything, I needed to preach to myself. So I needed a little shot in the arm. I need a little reminding. We often need reminding more than we need educating. Repetition is the mother of all learning, father of all skills. So I hope you guys got a little healthy reminder, a healthy proverbial kick in the butt reminder that you're called to greatness, that you're called to be a beacon of light in the darkness, a pillar of strength, a leader, not scratching around in the chicken yard with the chickens, but spreading your wings and soaring like an eagle, using these winds to propel you higher and to send your roots deeper to gain strength to gain fortitude, 
so that you can be that beautiful oak with the deep roots and the strong trunk that birds of the air and animals of the field come to as a safe haven, as a fruitful place of protection and provision. May you be that person, that leader. And as you learn to step into that identity and as you embrace that new challenge, may you prove yourself right that indeed COVID-19 was one of the best things that ever happened to you. Competition stepped out of your way. A pathway to your purpose opened up brightly and clearly. You stepped into your power like never before. You got resourceful like never before. You got innovative and creative like never before. New ideas, new iterations and innovations, new opportunities, new partners, attracting top producing agents who make you their exclusive, who are done with having a loan officer who's just griping, moaning, complaining, and waiting for the storm to roll over. And they saw your light, your love, your caring, your empathy, your creativity, your innovation. They're like, Let's screw it. Let's do it. Let's expand while everyone else is contracting. Let's take market share while everyone else is hunkering down. And they caught the energy that you bring. And you bring that everywhere you go. At home, now you don't have the office. So the home office, right? You're zooming, 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 going stratospheric. You know, you're not meeting in person now. Now you're in the Zoom room and you're turning your quarantine cash cave into the launching pad, the NASA launch pad to go stratospheric to a whole other level of abundance, of your impact and influence in the world and having your calling being fulfilled. Not sitting back and waiting for this freaking storm to roll over, but embracing it, not just letting it happen and enduring it, and getting through the day, getting through the week, getting through the month, screw freaking that. You're bringing yourself to it such that you're getting from it. It's not happening to you. It's happening for you. Now, if you're listening to this right now, you're like, Dorn, I'm loving the energy. I'm loving the perspective. I'm loving the shot in the arm. I needed this. I needed this reminder of who I am as a leader, as an influencer, as, as an opportunity creator, even in the midst of adversity. What I need now, Dorn, is some tools. I need some tools. How do I reach out to these top producing agents? How do I poach them from their lackadaisical, whining, stealing, complaining loan officers who are doing nothing for them? How do I have the right overture, the words that work to book those appointments, to get in front of them on Zoom, to be that light in the darkness, that merchant of certainty? How do I add real value? How do I help them resurrect dead leads into hot for what you got leads? How do I help them dominate on Google? How do I help them turn more of the open house leads into converted buyers? How do I help them have more locus of control and more certainty when it comes to getting their deals done and getting paid? How do I zig while everyone else is zagging? Well, I'm glad you asked. That's where we come in where we can get on the phone for a complimentary breakthrough call, where we lift up the hood on your business. We look at what's working, what's not working, where you're at now, where you want to be. And if we can see that indeed you're the right fit, you're someone we can help, we want to help. And we got a good connection of synergy where there's a hand and glove connection where we can actually help you create a breakthrough, even in the face of COVID-19, then we'll show you how to do that. If not, Frankly, we'll be the first people to advise you to pass on our services, maybe recommend something else. Either way, though, you'll leave the call with massive value, massive clarity, and chances are we'll have some fun along the way. So if you'd like to take advantage of that complimentary breakthrough call, here are the prerequisites. You need to want to expand while everyone else is contracting. You have to be a 100% commission mortgage professional with a comp plan at 80 basis points or higher. You need to be defiantly committed to being a beacon of light in the darkness, to be expanding while everyone else is contracting, to increase your income by 100K in spite of COVID-19, using it as a launching pad to propel you higher as opposed to having you buckle like cheap lawn furniture 
and just waiting for the storm to roll over. If that's you and you want to learn how to be least and last affected by market conditions, you want to learn how to prosper in unprosperous times, and you want to learn how to attract top producing agents who make you their exclusive without making a single cold call, without even meeting in person, just using Zoom. I invite you to book a breakthrough call by going to mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. That's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Let me just put it on the screen here. So mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. So I'm going to just put this on the screen for those of you who are visual, who uh, would like a visual cue for this. There it is, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. All right, guys, you'll either get on the phone with me or one of my consultants. We'll connect. We'll have a real deal, honest, authentic, transparent conversation, give you clarity like you've never had before so that you know what it really takes not to just win in the sunny skies, lollipops, unicorns, and rainbow seasons, but win even in the face of the dark storm. We'll show you how to be anchored in peace, power, poise in the face of any challenge such that you eat problems for freaking breakfast all day, every day. And if you want that muscle, that clarity, that kind of certainty, book a call. Let's talk. Let's see if we can help you. MortgageMarketingCoach.com forward slash apply. Thank you for hanging with me, guys. I love you. I appreciate you. I see the greatness in you. I see the champion in you. I see the winner in you. Let's rise up. Let's be the beacons of light in the darkness. Let's be that pillar of strength for those of, in our world who need us to rise up and be leaders right now. Let's lead them into that light and show them how to turn adversity into opportunity. Let's expand while everyone else is contracting. All right, guys, this is Dorn Aldana coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. Be well, stay healthy and safe. Be blessed. We'll talk to you soon. Peace. <laughs>